dobry, dzień dobry. Jak się czujemy? Velvety? No? Wspaniale. With all of the disruption happening in the world today, is it possible to disrupt the very way that we eat? The answer is yes, and in the next 15 minutes, I'm going to share with you five forces that are influencing the way that we eat and dine in Europe today. But first, a few words about Amrest. You may not know Amrest, but you very likely know the brands that we operate, especially those in the top row. We started in 1993 with one little pizza hut in Wrocław Rynek in Poland, and we've grown very rapidly since then. Today we have over 1,100 restaurants in 13 countries and counting. I started as the, uh, I got here in 1993 when we had one restaurant, and I'm the chief digital officer and the chief operating officer for Amrest. How does an American come to spend 20 years living in Poland? It's a great story, but they only gave me 15 minutes. So you'll have to buy me a beer afterwards. I'll share it with you. So let's get right to the five forces. Number one, London. Now, if in the 1980s you had told anybody that one day London would be considered the epicenter of restaurant innovation in Europe, they would have had you locked up. Food in London in those days was best known for fish and chips and shepherd's pie. That was about it. So what's changed? A lot. But let's talk about a couple of them. First one is diversity. Thanks in large part to the liberalization of labor policies in the EU, London has gotten a massive influx of immigration and tourism. And what you see, I remember 25 years ago when I did a semester abroad in London, riding the tube was effectively white, middle class, and English. Today, you take that very same subway car and you'll see pretty much every nationality and English may be the last language that you hear spoken. The second factor is the financial industry, centered here in Canary Wharf, virtually unrecognizable from 25 years ago. The explosion of the financial sector generated a massive amount of wealth. And guess what? Wealthy people didn't just want to eat fish and chips and shepherd's pie. They wanted premium restaurants. So London became a virtual training ground for some of the top chefs in the world, in the midst of some of the most transformative urban renovation projects happening anywhere in the world. So, the net impact of these two forces together created a stunning proliferation of restaurant concepts. From pop-up restaurants to ethnic street food parks to high-end restaurants. So if you're just looking for Michelin stars, go to Tokyo. But if you're looking for diversity and innovation in restaurants, go to London. Our senior team at Amherst does every year to keep up with what's happening and what's new. Now, who's working in these restaurants? That's right, a heck of a lot of Poles and a heck of a lot of European, Eastern Europeans. When my wife and I go to London, very often we just wind up ordering in Polish because it's easier. So, what we've seen is, because of this, a lot of the trends from London are hitting the continent more quickly. So if you go to Warsaw and you go to a restaurant like Monka i Voda or Aeoli, you see a lot of the London design trends and menu trends hitting, uh, hitting a city like Warsaw. It's very unusual. Now, a lot of people want to know, how will Brexit affect this? I have no idea. Nobody knows. The only thing we know for sure is that a lot of lawyers are going to make a lot of money in the next few years trying to figure it out. Moving on. When it comes to trends in food, you'll see a lot of words like these popping up everywhere. Fresh, healthy, organic, etc. But if I had to distill all of these down to one word, it would be...
what's in their food, where it's from, and how it's being prepared than they ever have before. Now, this has even affected us in KFC. We've actually rethought our designs, and we've started installing open kitchens in our restaurants. You know, after operating KFC for 20 years in Poland, we got so tired of new trainees going into our restaurants and going, oh my God, I had no idea it was all done fresh. We said, screw it, let's just show them. So we bring the chefs front and center, closer to the customer, so you can actually see them marinating and breading the chicken. And of course, we want you to know that the chicken is locally sourced from Poland. So we have chalkboards near the cash registers showing you and telling you where the chicken is from. It's even led us to, the, to impact the way we've started our newest concept, Pizza Hut Express. Now, we could have just done reheated slices of pizza, like a lot of places do, but we thought today's customers want something more and want something better. So we make everything fresh in the store, we hand stretch it and custom make a pizza for you in five minutes. And if you've never tried it, let me tell you, bardzo, bardzo smaczne. Pecha, zapraszamy. Okay, so when it comes to the forces transforming restaurants today, probably none is bigger than this one, delivery. So as Uber and Airbnb have disrupted taxis and hotels, home delivery is completely transforming the restaurant sector. This is all a function of convenience. People want what they want, when they want it, how they want it. And just to give you a snapshot of this, We've actually had delivery in our restaurants for KFC in Poland, in Warsaw, for over 20 years. But in the last couple of years, this has completely exploded. This year, we expect to do over 100 million zwati of sales just in the delivery sector. And you can see that's more than twice as much as it was just two years before. And what you've seen coming out of the space are these so-called, the rise of these so-called delivery aggregators. These are the online brands that will allow you to order from your favorite restaurant, even one you may not typically have gotten delivery from before, and they'll bring it right to your door. So in Poland, these are Pishnet.pl, Pizza Portal. Globally, you're seeing more of Delivery Hero, Deliveroo, Grubhub. And the space is so interesting, it's even attracted uh, non-traditional players like Uber and Amazon to the segment. I know Katzper's here somewhere from, uh, from Uber. So the valuations of these companies have gone from literally zero to billions of dollars in just a few years. It's absolutely transformative. And even though they're a competitor, I have to give a shout out to Domino's Pizza, which has done a really impressive job of innovating in the technology to allow you to get a pizza from the restaurant to your door. You may have seen articles about delivery, delivery drones, like, you, like they show here. This is not just a concept test anymore. This is going into production in New Zealand in the next few months. They've also worked with a former bomb diffusing equipment they call it a Drew, that will allow your pizza to get to your door by the sidewalk using self-guiding technology. Um, this has been, and if you know anything about delivery, typically delivery, the gold standard has been 30 minutes to get the food to your door. Domino's is working on getting that down to 10 minutes. They're really raising the bar on the segment. And in case you thought this was just about pizzas and fast food, let me assure you otherwise. One of the top restaurateurs in New York City is named David Chang. His newest restaurant called Ando will have zero seats. It will be delivery only. Delivery is revolutionizing and affecting every single segment of the restaurant industry. So, what does that mean for these old boxy, clunky things we used to call dine-in restaurants? Well, the answer is that to stay relevant, they have to focus on the experience, not just the food, to 
pull people out of their homes and into the restaurants. So you can expect to see much more of a focus on the experience than you've seen before. So, a couple examples of this. Some of you may be familiar with Buffalo Wild Wings. This is a, a chain in the US that really goes overboard with very large screen TV, but also interactive technology in the restaurant that allow you to interact with other clients and customers around trivia, sports, etc. We've actually started testing a concept of this, a concept like this around Pizza Hut to make the Pizza Hut dine-in uh, restaurant even more accessible. This is one of my favorite restaurants. This is, M this is Brasilia, done by Ambiente, down in Prague. If any of you have ever been to a Brazilian restaurant, where they come and they cut the, the, the servings of meat right to your table, anybody been to a Brazilian restaurant? They are incredibly fun and incredibly social and incredibly interactive, and you cannot replicate that at home. And I challenge you to get a reservation to Brasilia less than a month in advance. Now, I like this concept so much, I borrowed it for our pizza, Pizza Hut Pizza Festival. Has anyone been to Pizza Festival for Pizza Hut? A few of you. Oh, new customers. I can smell it. So the way Pizza Festival works is we have waiters and waitresses bring around you pizzas you may not typically order so that you can try slices of different pizza, very much like you would try cuts of meat at Brasilia. It's been one of our most popular um, promotions. We have lines out the door, but more importantly, it's created something that you can't copy. And I realize most of our competitors were small delivery focused mom and pop restaurants and they didn't have the dine-in restaurants we did. So we took this concept to adapt it to make our restaurants more fun and more social. And when it comes to um, the trend that you're seeing around experience, nobody blends retail and restaurants more effectively than this company. This is Italy. It's kind of part grocery store, part restaurant, part theater. And the average Italy can do 70 to $80 million of annual volume. These are unheard of numbers even a few years earlier. But again, real focus on experience, not just the food itself. And lastly, digital. I touched on digital a little bit earlier, talking about delivery. But digital is completely transforming the restaurant industry. 94% of millennials use their smartphone in the restaurant. And if you're in the restaurant business, you cannot afford to ignore that number. So our vision at Amrest, our digital vision, is to enable seamless, personalized, mind-blowing experiences for all of our guests. But notice that the emphasis is on the guest, not on the technology itself, and that's the key difference. So digital allows you to look through every aspect of your customer journey and identify and alleviate the pain points on that journey. So for KFC, we know that one of the things that our customers hate the most is they hate waiting in line. So starting next month, we're going to start testing a feature. Whoops, not that soon. Within the next month, we're going to start testing a feature called Skip the Line in KFC, which allows people to just order on their phone and go right to pickup. We're very excited about the technology. And next year in Pizza Hut, we're going to look for ways for people to pay at the table instead of flagging down a waiter or waitress, which is always the part of the experience people hate the most. But we work with one of the top companies in retail digital today, which is Starbucks. So let me share an example of what Starbucks is doing right now to blend digital into the customer experience. Emma here is on her way to an important... Hang on. Hold up. She's got a better idea. Starbucks. Starbucks. Made exactly how she wants it. Ordered and paid for ahead of time so she doesn't have to wait in line. And she does it all from the Starbucks app. The best way to unlock all the benefits of being a Starbucks Rewards member. Take Harvey, for example. He gets a croissant with his coffee every single day. And that keeps the rewards coming in. He tracks his stars right from the app. Nice. He's got enough stars for a free drink. Meanwhile, Krista is about to finish chapter 17 of her novel, The Big Twist but she could use a little more fuel to help her power through it. 
She paid for her order with the app, and as a Starbucks Rewards member, she gets a refill of her iced tea on the house. Thank you. Thanks. This is Max. His app just gave him some good news. He's eligible for a free drink. Why? Because it's his birthday. Happy birthday, friend. And here's Emma. She doesn't have to wait around. She goes straight to the counter, and her latte is just ready. Hey, Emma. Here's your grande two pump vanilla latte. What? See, Starbucks Rewards takes everything you already love about Starbucks and makes it even better. So Starbucks are absolutely the leaders in this. This blending of uh, mobile ordering, digital, and loyalty to create a personalized experience. And we expect to have mobile ordering in Pola next year. Now, I don't have time to show you all of the things that digital can do, but you're going to start seeing digital popping up more and more in your restaurant experiences. Just a couple quick examples. You'll start being able to use augmented reality to overlay your menu, see what's in the food, how it's prepared, how many calories. You can, of course, already today use augmented reality to overlay over a physical restaurant and understand on Yelp or using social proof how other people like that same restaurant. And for those of you who like Vivino and like taking photos, this app allows you to take a photo of your food and find out how many calories are in it. This is absolutely the way and the touch points that we're going to start seeing. Food and babies, by the way, number one and number two most posted photos online. So here again are those five forces shaping the restaurant industry today. And there's no question it's an exciting time because we will see more change in the next five years than we've seen in the last 50 in restaurants. But since the very heart and soul of the restaurant business is about the joy of great eating, I thought I would conclude with a quote from one of the great food lovers of our time, Luciano Pavarotti, who said this, one of the very nicest things about life is the way we must regularly stop whatever it is that we are doing and devote our attention to eating. And that, we hope, will never change. Thank you.